Let's start. Okay, so firstly, introduce yourself. Am I looking at you or am I looking into the camera? It doesn't matter. You choose. Okay. Um, this is awkward because now <laughs> you know me. Okay, my name is Wanda. Okay. My surname is Zuma. Uh-huh. Like, who are you? Explain yourself. I am an actor and... Okay, let me just say I'm a performing artist because that will cover everything. And I'm not going to have to say one by one, what do I do? You can. Because you, you want me to. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm a performing artist. I act, I write, I direct, and I recite. Those are the things that I can say I'm confident in, but I also dabble in other things, you know, just to try my hand at them. And I see if it's not for me, I leave it. If it is, I invest in it and grow within it okay and what is it that led you to those kind of things um, what interests you in that kind of stuff i always say it's my background because okay. of how i i grew up you know because i grew up in two different neighborhoods um okay. and so these are two very different neighborhoods Mm-hmm. And I'm always explaining that uh, in these two neighborhoods, I was always that kid who stood out, you know, because I was trying so hard to fit in until okay. I got to a point point. someone born with okay, no, actually, it's not such a bad thing to stand out, mm-hmm. you know, because in the black neighborhood, Yasem Lazi, mm-hmm. I was this guy who, who's always... In the white neighborhood, I said bluff. So here, I was too white, you know, right, trying yeah. to fit in mm-hmm. and be in an Lokshin. And then when I'm on the other side, I'm too black, you know, because yeah. <laughs> they all white and right. shit. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's that was my upbringing. I was trying. I was always trying to fit in and that's how characters came up because yeah. I'm looking at all these people mm-hmm. and I'm looking at how different they are but they're still the same. Right. So I'm trying to fit myself in more. It's okay. Lailok Shina Siganji. Okay, Nami, I must, you know. Try to be this way. Try to be this way. Yeah. And then the other side, I was, I was free on both sides, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, I was still a kid. I'm only when I'm thinking about it now I mm-hmm. can be like as in actually I've always been trying to f- right. put myself there. Kanti mm-hmm. when I was growing up I was just being a child. Got the books. Oh, la Okay, mm-hmm. let me act a certain way. Yeah. And when I'm on the other side, oh, I need to act this certain way, this side. And so and so and so I think until I started in high school, mm-hmm. that's when I actually was falling into myself and becoming who I am. And firstly, we didn't have drama at, what's that school that we <laughs> We didn't have drama at Grosvenor. Yeah. But um, we'd always have, uh, I need to read, read those books, um, all Shakespeare and yeah, Nanani, yeah. and then in English. Mm-hmm. And then we'd have to act out some things, you know, for marks. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't look at it as marks. I was like, this is fun. Right. I'm going to do this. And th- we always used to, you know, ace it, me and my friends. Mm-hmm. So that's when we figured, well, that's when I figured, let's see, uh, I actually like this thing. And the friends that I'm mentioning are also in the entertainment industry one way or another okay. at this point. Mm-hmm. Not all of them, but, you know, nice. the core of the people who were doing what I did as well. Right. So uh, I saw then, let see, I'm very, this thing excites me. This this acting or performing, you know, mm-hmm. it does. It didn't matter what language it is in, cause even when I was in primary, we did this Afrikaans skit. I I, I don't know Afrikaans, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, uh, at that time I was like the main character because I would come in, cause every all the other white kids knew Afrikaans, and then I'd be like, yo, cause very uh I was. I was smart, so I I knew what I wanted to say, and then I'd figure it out, and I'd come in 
say my lines in Afrikaans, say this, say that. And it was so dope that we had to do it for the whole school and stuff. Like, it was extra. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, that's when I start. That's when I started figuring this thing out. And then I got to high school and I told you how that was. And when I had to... Um, decide what I want to do with my life, you know, in grade 11, you'd be like, okay, what am I going to do when I'm done with my trade next year? Mm -hmm. You know, family is always saying, do this, do that. Because even the subjects I was doing were because of what family told me to do, mm -hmm. you know? And then I was crazy because I, I switched up a whole lot of subjects in grade 11 and 12. Because I did what they wanted me to do in grade 10, and I mm. passed, and then I was like, I, I don't like this. Right. <laughs> and I'm barely passing it. So yeah. I started switching up some in grade 11, and then I went to K. Now I have to really decide what I'm going to do in matric. Uh, I did something that people, okay, let me not even mention that, because it has nothing to do with where we're going. But I switched the subject that I was not supposed to switch in matric, so mm. that... Uh, I knew to man I can ev evident eventually pass and mm -hmm. pick what I want to do when I'm done. And then uh of figures cut to cater my subjects, family were like I mean who cares what you want to do in university, family was still trying to be like, yo, just you know, try this route. I'm like right. no. <laughs> and then I kind of because my family is very uh Christian, so I was like, you guys have to let me do what I want to do because you'll preach it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're always yeah. preaching this. So let me figure myself out. Let me do what I love. And mm -hmm. they understood and they let me do drama. So mm -hmm. I did drama. Was that an easy <clears throat> thing to do, to have that conversation? It wasn't easy, but I, I blackmailed them. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, not in a bad way, like, right. in a good way. I was like, yeah. come on, man. I mean, you know, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And now, Corona, I, I didn't do it, like, straight after high school. I took a gap year mm -hmm. where I I worked at a call center. And at this call center, we were calling people, like, different people, and they didn't know where we were calling them from. So, right. me, I called from Jamaica. I called from <laughs> USA. I was just... You know, try, I was playing characters the whole time <laughs> because it was very frustrating, that job. So the yeah. only way to actually um, keep myself sane right. was to do what I love at a place that I don't love, you yeah. know. So uh, it worked out like that. And a friend of mine who I worked with there was like, you need to take this acting thing seriously. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'll I'll try <laughs> And then that's when I, I was like, okay, let me um, do this poetry thing because mm -hmm. I was still... About. So me, I would be at my desk talking to people on the phone, but I'm busy writing poetry. Uh -huh. I'm busy writing, busy writing. And people loved what I was writing. So I was like, okay, this thing is actually the one for me. So I, I the following year, I did go study I studied for three years and mm -hmm. um, the rest was history I'm where I am today because I took that decision and I never looked back mm -hmm. till today mm -hmm. and then you spoke about standing out and you know trying to fit in in these different places but then eventually you decided to come into your own what was it that led you to that decision to be like okay you know what I need to figure myself out. I'm not this person that needs to be trying to fit in. What is it that got you there? Okay, I feel, I think um, as much as we come from a family or uh, we are part of a race or, mm -hmm. you know, at, after all of that or before all of that, we are individuals, you know. So mm -hmm. that's when I saw myself, see, this is what, I want to do this is what I love no matter what anybody else says mm -hmm. I need to make myself happy first and when I'm happy I can make other people happy mm -hmm. if I love myself I can um it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> that love you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can give out that love right. you know but how did you get to that 
how did I get to it? Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't really think about it, but <laughs> um, like I um, I mentioned earlier, it's seeing all these things when you look back in life, Ubon Usi. I was happy when I did this in high school. I was happy when I was um, performing for people, you know, because you you know me uh, as a person. I'm very reserved and can say shy what? and shit. <laughs> Whatever, but yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 I thought I should, you know, try to get out of my shell, and that wasn't an easy thing, you know, putting myself out there when. I'm always trying to keep to myself, but mm -hmm. eventually it happened. But I still today, talking to people, socializing with people is yeah. difficult. But if I have to address a whole lot of people, mm -hmm. I can address them. But if it's me and just a couple of people chilling, mm, most people will tell you that I'll be the one who just, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I'm just yeah, I'm just chilling and mm -hmm. um quiet and listening unless yeah, you asked me um to talk and it's something that I want to talk about or I'm passionate about or I've been reading about or whatever then yeah, I'll engage in that conversation. But yo, I'm bad with just general conversation, right? Small talk. Yeah, small talk. I right? people know that I undies. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm still trying to figure out how you came to be yourself because I feel like you haven't really answered that question. I get it that you eventually decided and you eventually got to... It was a progress. Was. But yeah, so what, what I was can't that pinpoint process? It. What was that process? How did it begin? What was your thought process even during that whole transition? You know? Yeah, I can't really pinpoint it on like one specific occasion. Mm -hmm. But is there not something that you remember from like back in your childhood where, you know, maybe there was an instance where you thought to yourself, Ruti, okay, now I have to do this instead of what I've been doing? I would say, okay, so growing up, when I lived uh, at, at the bluff, mm -hmm. it was a situation whereby. Um, we had a white man who my dad worked for, mm -hmm. but then he took us in as a family because he was like, no, uh, instead of this guy working for me, I love these people. Come stay with me because I live in this big house alone. Mm -hmm. So you you can take upstairs, I'll stay downstairs, but then like everything we did together, it was mm -hmm. literally a family. And he's the one who taught me a lot of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he passed away when I was in grade eight. I think, yeah, that's when I was like, okay, my whole life I've had somebody to guide me, to tell me, uh, who'd make sure that I read a lot, who'd make sure that I uh, was always on par with studies and everything. Mm -hmm. So when that person passes away, you have to look back at yourself and be like, okay, who am I without this person? Or who am I without help from anybody else? Right. That's when I started looking deep into myself and figuring myself out and it didn't it wasn't something that just happened at the same time it gradually happened and then yeah, i figured it out when i was in like grade what 11 what is this 12. gradual happening i want to know about the gradual <laughs> happening <laughs> it's me um still doing what we were doing while he was alive but then what were you doing i told you must be okay Right after school, mm -hmm. we'd go to the library, we'd get a couple of books, he'd make sure that um, my homework is done, and mm, take me to soccer practice. All of that stuff was mm -hmm. what we were doing when he was alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's stuff that, when I was growing up, it was a, it, no, no kid wanted to keep reading every day, you know, we'd like, we like to play and stuff, you know. Right. So... When he was gone, I was like, I actually like this thing, mm -hmm. you know? And, oh, so he bought me the Lion King book 
and I also had the Lion King movie. So, mm-hmm. so that was that's I I could recite every single line from the Lion King when I was still a child. Mm-hmm. So that's when um, sort of when I I was starting. I think that's exactly when I was starting to, you know, figure out performing and la- love performing before mm-hmm. I knew Gucci. Hey. Uh, I like I love performing. Right. You know, yeah. it was just something I like doing. I was like, I'm King. I'm gonna talk throughout the whole movie <laughs> <laughs> because I know exactly what's happening. Right. And you know, uh, still to till today, I still watch the Lion King. I know it, but I still watch it because I love yeah. it. What's your favorite line there? <laughs> <laughs> when Timon says, "What do you want me to do? Dress in drag and do the hula?" <laughs> and then he does that thing, <laughs> like. Uh, that's a line I always just say randomly. Well, to myself, I don't say to people because yeah. I don't think I'm awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but when somebody is asking me to do something ridiculous, I'm like, "What do you want me to do? Dress in drag and do the hula?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, so it's small things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, me, I still read today because it's something I grew up no, doing. That was me figuring myself out. Mm-hmm. When he was gone, I was still doing those same things. Yeah. I still love soccer. Well, I've always loved soccer, man. But he pushed me to, you know, get a team and do everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So would you say that having that person helped sort of shape the person that you are now mm-hmm. and the things that you do now that make you who you are? Yeah. I think that goes for everybody. Mm. I think everybody has somebody that has sort of shaped them in one way or another, mm. whether you are aware of it or not. Because mm-hmm. when you look at yourself, you know, see, I'm doing this because something happened back then and mm. I'm where I am today. I mean, I'm sure you didn't just wake up and be like, as in, I need to hear people's stories and help them out with this. I'm sure something happened for you to also go down that route of course so <laughs> as i'm saying everybody yeah. has something that has shaped them to be what they are today mm-hmm. and that is that's what shaped me okay and so right now are you happy with the person that you are yes Would you say I, uh, that you are like fully self-aware not fully mm-hmm. but i'm learning myself more Mm -hmm. as much as I'm you know learning other people because every every relationship that we have we learn something from it whether it's the relationship between you and your parents you and your partner you and your friends Mm -hmm. you have you're always picking up something that makes you who you are well that's made you who you are today right and what sort of things have you picked up in those relationships that have that really make you who you are now that you're happy about okay um i would say i learned a lot of love from my mom i learned how to love a person unconditionally Mm -hmm. because i feel like the relationship my mom and my dad have um it's very toxic and some would say it's it's dead, you know, mm-hmm. but um, she showed love to me, my brothers, and my dad, even though if it was somebody else, she would have left a long time ago, mm-hmm. you know. So I learned that type of love from my mom. And I look at it, and I always say that no matter how much I can love a person, mm-hmm. I must still love myself. Which is what she also does. She loves herself, but she also loves everybody else. And then from my dad, I learned what I don't want to be. <laughs> you know, I love him, but I don't want to be like him. And I always see uh, his traits in me. And that's always when I'm like, hey, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I hit myself like, no, yeah. I can't I can't go down that route. Right. And it's, it, you know, things, they just happen because I lived with this person my whole life. Right. So, yeah, those are the traits that I learned f- j- just from home. Mm-hmm. And then, again, yeah, I've been pulling from friends, from relationships that, are, that I've been in. Mm-hmm. Um, with the re- 
with the romantic relationships. I think from each and every single relationship, there's something I learned. I did bad things here. Uh, I was hurt here. And we have to learn from these things. Of course, yeah. We can't be making the same mistakes. Right. So I don't think I'm the same person I was in my last relationship than that then I am then the person that I am and the one that I'm in now mm-hmm. so yeah okay <laughs> what are the bad things that you sort of picked up and decided okay I can't be doing this or I can't be with this person <laughs> <laughs> well like the main one's infidelity you know uh-huh. you can't hurt a person because you know that's you don't want to be hurt as well. Right, but what is, like, the infidelity, what was it, where was it stemming from? Oh, that, that is from, you see, I'm going to, but I don't think that was, but (laughs) (laughs) I think it's, it's from, okay, because when I was still young, I'd watch, like, my brothers and, like older people and I'd see it's like, well, these people well mostly I work with guys yeah. you see other guys doing stuff and you're like Ish, I want to be like that mm. like he looks like he's the guy he's the yeah. man you know <laughs> he's the guy. and then yeah. we end up doing these things and like we're trying to prove a point mm-hmm. I got to a point where I was like Ish, who, who am I proving this point for because yeah. when, when the person I'm with finds out it all comes back to me I'm not going to be like, no, but my brother did it. No, but my friends do it. No. Right. You know? So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Like, say, we, 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 we suffer. Like, people are still suffering today from these things. Mm-hmm. People look at uh, people who are in the limelight and how their relationships are and be like, I want something like that or I don't want something like that. You know, mm-hmm. the big one, we all know what's going on, <laughs> right? You know? Entanglements. Dude, so we can't judge because we are not in that situation. Right. We can always just look back at ourselves and be like, what do I want? And once you know what you want and you write down and you, you, you all these affirmations you say to yourself, that's when you go into the direction that you want to go. Mm-hmm. When you keep telling yourself, it's like, I mean, I want this for my life. I want to do this. If you want to be that person who's everywhere, who's, you know, has multiple people, mm-hmm. I'm not judging you. That's you. Do you. But just make sure that the people that you are with are happy. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's, we put on this earth to love and we need to make sure we're always happy. Too many people are dying because of things that they're not talking about. Right. They're suffering by themselves mm-hmm. and doing things that are out of character. We don't, we, we don't think, why are they doing these things? We're just like, how oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So people need to talk more. You need to have more people coming here. <laughs> you <I'm> know? <laughs> People really need to talk more and get their stories out there and right. make sure that they're happy. Mm. And they know why they do the things that they do. Exactly. Mm. You can't just be doing things. We we grow now. Like, even kids, I, I hope that... Because, yo, these, this new generation is on some other things. So I don't understand because I'm not a part of them. But right. I hope they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Just like how I'm sure our parents hoped we knew what we are doing, so mm-hmm. I hope we're making them proud. <sighs> Do you think you're making your parents proud? Definitely. Mm-hmm. I, t- I think I'm my ancestors' wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. I d- <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, for real. <laughs> right? uh, I didn't like. I don't know if they ever thought. You know, we would be doing the things that we're doing right. you know it was a big deal when i first appeared on tv mm-hmm. and my aunt was like we need to celebrate this mm-hmm. you know yeah. so i was like oh okay that's when i was feeling it's okay i've chosen a lane for myself i can't look back now yeah you know so i've never looked back since and i always try to 
make them happy yeah. when when i get um a gig or whatever the first people i tell i'm like yo so i'm gonna be doing this look out for this but yeah. don't tell anybody yet <laughs> you know yeah. Because as much as I want to surprise them, I don't want them to be like, how? Oh, okay. Why? I was still like, oh. Yeah, of course. But yeah. Well, are you making yourself proud as well? Yeah. Because I have very big dreams for myself. Mm-hmm. And I always try to remind myself. Because I, um, growing up, I always thought, Kuti, I don't deserve this. Mm-hmm. I don't fit in here. I'd, mm-hmm. you know, And I'd always try to bring myself down it's, and until people kept telling me it's no you can't keep playing yourself small come on like believe that you supposed to be here yeah. you belong but then my own personality is not the, the type of personality personality to you know come into a room and look down on people i don't want to you know i always see people <sighs> I'm always <laughs> on sets uh, with people who act like that. Mm. And I'm like, as much I respect this person, but I respect their work. I right. just, I don't want to have that ego, mm-hmm. you know? I, I want to be myself. People are always like, no, you can't play small. You can't be at a certain place. Or mm-hmm. I'm like, why not? If I want to chill with my friends in town, wherever, like we always used to do, I'll do it. Yeah. Because that's that that's me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't I can't be like, no guys, because now yeah. there's people there, whatever. No. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so you said you used to have these feelings of like not being good enough, I'll say I'm paraphrasing, but mm-hmm. something like that of not being good enough, where were those feelings coming from? Is it still the whole thing of trying to fit in in these different places and feeling like, okay, I'm too black for them, too yeah. white yeah. on this side? Uh-huh. It's definitely from that because um, even the fact that uh, we were a, ba- a black family living with a white man in a white neighborhood, it's like... It's, so I can't be um, stepping out of line, right, you know. I always need to stay in my yeah, lane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, even till today, I still try to stay in my lane, but I want to own that lane. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, put myself in places where, I, not that I don't belong, but I don't want to be. Because right. people expect you to be in certain places or do mm-hmm. certain things just because you're in the limelight. But mm-hmm. if it's not you, it's not you. Don't force it. Right. How how did you come to that distinction that, okay, I want to now do things because I want to do them, not because there's this expectation or I need to stay in my lane or whatever it is. How did you come to making that distinction? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think um, about it? <laughs> how did I get to that? Um, how did you gain your confidence? I think it's the friends I have. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. there's certain friends who are, who really believe in themselves, mm-hmm. who would always be like, "I'm, I'm, 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 I'm a big deal," you know. Oh, muito lezo e chelo I I get pra. I mean, I'm supposed to have this and this and this right now, right. you know? Mm-hmm. And then I always look back at myself and be like, as we can see, I'm also supposed to, you know, have this and this and do this and that. Mm-hmm. Because I want to, and when I look at where I'm at, I'm like, eh. I didn't think I would be. It's, it got be let, you know? Mm-hmm. The, the the parts of me who grow who grew up at Bluff and would see all these things would be like I need to have this, I need to have that, I'd love to have something like this. Mm-hmm. And then the parts of me are similar as my book is like Ish, I, it, these things are not yours. No, mm-hmm. well, you still have to work very hard to get there. Mm-hmm. You know. But I've experienced them, so why can't I have them? Right. It's just things like that. Yeah, well, since you've experienced them, why can't <laughs> why I can't have, I have them? Yeah, I want them for myself. Mm-hmm. You know. And now, do you feel deserving? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Because I've told myself that I deserve everything that comes my way. Mm-hmm. Everything that's making me happy, I deserve it. Because I've worked hard for it. I've worked hard on myself. Mm-hmm. I've worked hard on my career. I've worked hard on just being the person that I am today. Mm-hmm. How did you work hard on yourself? I'd look at, as I said earlier, I'd looked at my flaws. Mm-hmm. I looked at where I come from and where I want to go. And then you keep, because you don't just become. Exactly. Yeah, so, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> I want to know the process. You, you look, you look at your flaws. You look at what you have. You look at what you want. And then you decide, how am I going to get to where I am? I mean, to where I want to go from where I am. Mm -hmm. And then you see, you see, okay, my strong points are one, two, and three. How am I going to use my strong points to to fix my my, my bad traits? Mm -hmm. You know, because I know I have a lot of love. I'm always trying to make people happy. Mm-hmm. And back then when I would be that person who uh, who cheats it, <laughs> it's because I wanted to keep a lot of people happy at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I had to decide, nah, I can't, I can't make everybody happy. No, you cannot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I have to focus and direct... Um, my love and the energy I'm trying to put out to the places where I want him to go. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. I'm not saying, like, all the other people, you must start now, shut them out. You, <laughs> you must, you must, you must always um, spread love, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. have a focal point. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you also me- mentioned affirmations. Is that something that you do? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I do the whole thing and what's the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> so um, you, what I do is I mm-hmm. write down what I want to achieve okay. and I, I put it out there in the, in the universe I'm mm-hmm. a person who likes to meditate and you know bring myself towards myself mm-hmm. and figure out okay Wanda what do you want to do what are you trying to achieve? How are we achieving this? And I just keep, I, I, I just talk, you know, <laughs> you say it, you say, I'm going to get this, I'm going to do this. You know, I've, I've always told myself, I, I'm going to be on TV. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be a problem. I'm going to be, <laughs> I want to be um, a, a household name, you know, mm-hmm. a big actor yeah. on TV. You know, I've never really, I've never said I want to be a personality because I was like, I, I don't want people, I want people to love my work. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want them to judge my personality because I'm still figuring out. I'll figure my personality out until I die. Yeah. You know, so I don't want people to be looking at me and judging what I'm doing. I'm just going to live. If you, if you're watching, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I don't mind. I hope you're learning something because I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I always try to tell myself or yeah, to tell myself what I, where I want to go, what Mm -hmm. I want to do. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying that you're not perfect. Is that something that was easy for you to come to terms with? And how did you come to terms with it? It was crazy because when I was young, it's, I didn't think I was perfect, but I was like, I always w- was like, because I can see when I figured out, was there, I, I stand out wherever I go. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when I was like, okay, I'll, I'll ride this wave of standing out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ride yeah. this wave of standing out. But when I was, or when I started being aware of things, you know, going to auditions and not getting the role or mm-hmm. you know just not being the best at something you like I'm not perfect <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as dope as I thought I was yeah you know so I have to keep working on myself right. 
Because uh, I'd be in class and, you know, you'd be the best in class. But mm-hmm. now when you'll have to step outside and go to competitions or whatever and right. you don't win and you're like, hmm, this is a problem. <laughs> I need yeah. to work harder on myself or on my craft or my work or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I, I took that and just put it into my whole life and be like, um, maybe I'm not the best son. Maybe I'm not the best boyfriend, mm-hmm. you know? I know, like... It was weird saying I love you to my mom, you know, and then I I look back and it's like, why is it weird? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just say it. Because when she'd say it, I was like, ah, yes. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you can see, Mons, why do I need to tell you? Why is this awkward? No. <laughs> but now I, I say it without any difficulty. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that's just a, a part of how I look back. Mm-hmm. And so it's, I'm not perfect, but I can always work on what I I'm aware of. Mm-hmm. So you're I, comfortable now with not being perfect. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, is there something that you just wanna randomly talk about? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you. <laughs> sure, you said you have some questions. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm not gonna do that to you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, you said you learned unconditional love. Mm. So, was that an easy thing to do? Did you find that you, you also mentioned trying to please everybody. Did you find yourself overextending yourself, you know, in certain places in such a way where you would kind of set yourself on fire to keep other people warm? Kind of thing. Yeah. With the unconditional love thing, because as much as I know my mom has unconditional love, I don't know everything she goes through. Mm-hmm. You know, I just know what I've seen. Yeah. You know, and then you. <sighs> But I mean, with regards to yourself. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to bring it back to myself, but yeah. I wanted like a starting point, and at the, it's the perfect one because that's where I learned it from. Mm-hmm. You know, I learned it from my mom, but I don't know. So, so what? Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that, um, I saw that in her. Would see she has this unconditional love, you know. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, uh, this is how you treat everybody. You just love everybody like this, you know, but I I didn't know what other people are doing to her, right. you know. So, Nami, I try to just you know just put myself out there and love everybody, just do um, good by everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes me doing good by somebody else is hurting somebody else, you know, mm-hmm. and other people would hurt me, and ret- you know so. Unconditional love, it's something you need to figure out and tell yourself, what do I mean by unconditional? Mm -hmm. Or or in this partnership that I have with this person, uh, we need to understand, so I'll be the good team. How is our relationship? What are our rules in this relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we don't want to find ourselves in entanglements, you know? (laughs) (laughs) We're not trying to, but... We just need to know what makes you happy. What can I do to make you happy? What can you do to make me happy? How are we going to keep our relationship alive, Mm -hmm. you know, without hurting each other or anybody else? You know, we relationships are basically that it's relationships. (laughs) Like I see this thing in my head. I'm seeing a ship. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so with the relations that you have with uh-huh. people, uh, there are smooth waters and then there's also rocky waters, mm-hmm. you know. Sometimes it's going to be smooth sailing. Sometimes you're, you're going to be fighting storms. for your life. Yeah. There's going to be storms, like <laughs> things. But we have to hold each other together for this ship to keep going yeah. and reach our destination. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if we're not in this together, we'll be doomed. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah, it's it's rough out here. <laughs> it's, <rough. laughs> it's really rough out here. Uh-huh. And then, how do you show yourself that same unconditional love? 
when I look at myself in the mirror, <laughs> I look at myself and I'm happy, you know. Mm-hmm. People are always trying to, you know, fix their faults or whatever. And it, it's it's cool if you want to... Ish. People look at things very differently, you know. Mm-hmm. Somebody can look at their body and be like, I, ish, I need to have surgery. Mm-hmm. Or I need to do... Because th- that's what they want to do. Right. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Some people... Like, I really wanted to get braces when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was like, mm, I, I don't know. I want. I don't want to. I'm like. This is me. Right. <laughs> if you don't. If you don't fuck with it, I don't give a shit. But then, uh, when it got to um, castings and stuff, you know, there's certain castings that I can't go to, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's cool. Then it's not for me. Right. And that's me. I'm unconditionally loving myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, here I am. If I am not what you're looking for, you're lost. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But what sort of things do you actively do besides that that you do, you know, to show yourself, let's see, you know, like, damn, I love myself. That like, make you feel love from yourself the same way that you do, like somebody else would if you were showing mm. them this unconditional love or the same way that you would expect a partner to make you feel? How do you make yourself feel those feelings? But it's crazy because when you ask that question, um, as much as I say you need to love yourself first before you love everybody else, I do love myself first, Mm -hmm. but I'm always looking to make the next person happy. You know, I'm always trying to... If... I'm staying with you. Let's say you and I are in a relationship mm-hmm. and I'm like, uh, ish, you need this and this and this and this and this and this and this. I'm going to go get it for you and forget that. I also don't have this thing. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have it as well, you know. So it's something I'm still working on. I do love myself, but I can love myself more. Mm-hmm. You know, some people say uh, going to a restaurant on your own and, you know, eating by yourself is a, is is the uh, the way or I don't know what they say but it's them that's the way they show themselves that mm-hmm. I really love myself I can just go and treat myself I'm not there I'm not there yet, <laughs> You're not there yet. <laughs> I'm not like I'm just I'm being honest yeah yeah I'll go when I'm hungry I don't treat myself I I haven't got there yet mm. it's what, something I still need to do what, what do you feel what do you think is you know keeping you from being at that place i don't know i'm i keep repeating this i'm always looking to make the next person happy even at home like i would i i'm always thinking let's see when i can i'm gonna just i'm gonna build my family house before i Mm -hmm. build my own you know i'm always thinking of my mom to say okay i need to take her out of home Mm-hmm. where she's staying and you know get her her own space mm-hmm. you know so i always think of that before i think of what's <laughs> i mean <I'm> <laughs> yes but the question that the reason why you keep repeating yourself is because you're not answering the that's question. what i'm saying why? i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yet maybe next time i come i'll have an uh, have an answer mm-hmm. i really don't have an answer for that question that's why i, I keep saying I love people more than I love myself. Mm-hmm. Well, the people that I love, I really love them more mm-hmm. than I love myself. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. It's what, crazy. I don't know. I, I feel like I need to ask this again. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel like you need to get there? What do I need? Mm. What do I need? Yes, <laughs> Maybe do you, you, need? you tell me. What do I need? No, you have to answer this question. <laughs> I can't answer it for you. Nobody can answer it for you. I think I still need to think about that mm-hmm. and figure it out. See where it really stems from. And I need to figure it out. From this conversation, mm-hmm. do you not see where it could possibly stem from?
Det er en sommer Ja. Like, I... I don't want to say that, but I think it's in for my It's not a bad thing, like, saying that this kind of trait comes from here or this is the person that affected this kind of behavior. It's just recognizing that, okay, this is where this comes from and this is why I behave in these patterns. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And so I think once you recognize that, it's easier to sort of then find a way to work through them and find whatever path you need to be on to move on to where you actually want to be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. And hopefully I'll I'll get to the point where I really put myself first. Mm-hmm. Cuz I think I put myself first to a certain extent. Right. But then when somebody else needs me immediately. I'm like let me help this person out. You know, I'll mm. get I'll get back to myself because I'm like I'm not going anywhere, most. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like it's sort of being selfish to put yourself first? Sometimes I think like that. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I yeah, not even sometimes. I always think when I put myself first, I'm being selfish. Mm-hmm. I think it goes back to that deserving thing. You, you've told yourself that you deserve certain things, so you can also tell yourself that you deserve to put yourself first. It doesn't take away from anybody else. Instead, it actually adds to how much you can show up for other people the way that you want to Mm -hmm. if you actually put yourself first. That's true. Mm. So what do you think you can do about that? (laughs) Why are you asking me how to do? (laughs) Like, what can I do about that? Like, how can I not think of oh not not think of other people but how can i put myself above them it's not above see it's not a thing of putting yourself first is not saying that everybody else takes a back seat it's just saying that i'm taking care of myself as much as Mm -hmm. i take care of other people we're on the same level Mm -hmm. it's not a thing of oh no now i'm i'm not gonna worry about that person i'm not gonna worry about that person's needs Mm -hmm. but it's just that I'm going to worry about my needs too Mm. oh yeah I'm going to try that out I'm going to cheat on them with myself (laughs) (laughs) that's one way of looking (laughs) at it (laughs) that's why that's how I'm looking at it I'm like okay I need to cheat on them with myself Yeah. Mm, make sure they're happy and I'm happy at the same time you know Cause I, I'm I'm always trying to focus on one thing. Like if I'm making myself happy, let me make myself happy at this time, mm-hmm. and then. But if somebody else needs me, let me go make this person happy. Why can't you see it as something that's sort of a balance? That's why that and where I am in my life now, mm-hmm. I'm always trying to find balance in everything that I'm doing. Yeah. So, I it's a pit. It's not a pity, but I just came to the space right now while I'm still on that journey. So you will forever be on that journey. <laughs> yeah. We're but all constantly yeah. on that journey of that balance. It's a matter of being act. aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's tricky. Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell me what you're going to do about it. See <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just, I'm going to try, um, what are you gonna do? Not what you're gonna try. What are you going to do? I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will um, find the balance, cause that's the important part. It's finding how you can do what you put your mind to, and I'm putting my mind to loving myself as much as I love other people. Mm-hmm. So, so, what kind of things are you gonna do to show yourself that love? What kind of things are you going to do to show up for yourself as much as you're showing up for other people and meeting your own needs as much as you're meeting the needs of others? So <laughs> 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 I'm going to say that. The actual things that you will do to do that, <laughs> you know? Dude, you put me on the spot here. 
<laughs> wow. Because now I I need I need to yo, I don't like just talking and then when I'm thinking about this later, I'll be beating myself up saying no, I shouldn't have said this because I didn't think about it. Well, no, so you, I want I'm to think giving about you it. the opportunity to think about it and tell me exactly what you think. I don't want you to just say things. Ish. Well, my thinking can take hours because <laughs> I really need to think. Well, what do you want? I want to be happy. That's that's the most important yes, thing. Yes, and what makes you happy? Making other people happy. And? <laughs> <laughs> making, ish, yeah, well, I'm going to say making family happy. That's still other people. That's still other people. I'm talking about you as an individual. What personally puts a smile on your face, makes you feel that deep-seated joy, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> like what really makes me happy is when I've made you happy, then I'm happy. Mm-hmm. What is it about making other people happy that gives you that? Do you seek validation from? Do you find value in making other people happy? Mm-hmm. I love seeing people happy. I don't want to see anybody hurting. Mm-hmm. You know, because growing up, I always see my mom hurting, mm-hmm. and I try to cheer her up. So, well, there is where that comes from as well. We did say that, <laughs> yeah, we did say steps for my mom, but yeah, At what else makes me happy? Yeah. Performing makes me happy, but me performing is making other is entertaining other people, so. I, that's just me. I, I don't think we need to change that. <laughs> no, definitely not. It's not something that you need to change. But again, like we said earlier, you need to find that balance where you include yourself in mm-hmm. that happiness and yeah. have that sort of thing that just exclusively makes you happy, exclusively is just for you and doesn't involve another person. Mm-hmm. Like getting to that taking yourself out level. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I will. I will get to that level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What makes me happy besides making other people? Yeah. I I don't know. I really don't. I have. I don't have an answer. There's something for you to think about. Mm-hmm. And I definitely will. I'll try to figure out what exclusively makes me happy. If mm-hmm. I'm. <laughs> Music makes me happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm really thinking of things I do when I'm when I'm by myself. Yeah. I listen to music. That's mm-hmm. what I do. It makes me happy. Um. I don't watch as much. Uh. TV and movies, yeah, but entertainment make makes me happy because mm. I see that these people are doing what they love and that's what I love doing. Right. So I, I'm like, if that can make me happy, I can do something that can make somebody else happy. I can write something that will heal somebody else. It's healing me in the process as well because right. okay, writing makes me happy. Mm-hmm. And that I do that all the time, but when you think about where it's going, it's still going to entertain other people, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Do you take time out like just for yourself, like besides the taking yourself out thing? But like, do you spend time with yourself? Yeah, with my earphones, <laughs> listening to music. <laughs> that's yeah. that's me by myself. Mm-hmm. You multi, you are figuring it out. I'll be playing music ninety percent of the time. Mm-hmm. That makes me Doing happy. Doing what? Just chilling, listening to music. Listening writing. to music, writing, trying to cook. <laughs> 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 I like experimenting in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes me happy. So. Yeah, those are all things that are self care. Mm. Things, but now corner, I'm gonna give people this food to eat, <laughs> which is fine. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 
But yeah, those are the things that make me happy. Mm-hmm. Like, how often do you do that? Um, whenever I get time, every every day, basically. The first thing I think, Mang Fu, the first thing I want to do is play some music and while I am getting ready to sort out my day. So mm-hmm. music is always there. Do you have like a morning routine of sorts? Not really, because in the type of um, career that I'm in, there's no such thing as a routine. <laughs> the, the, every day is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't think you can have a morning routine? Mm. Mm-mm. Unless if I if I really want to and I create one, mm-hmm. then maybe maybe I do and I'm not aware of it. Maybe somebody else could be like I when I'm over I'm saying we have we clean. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. <laughs> yeah, you do some other things, but yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I really have a routine, a morning routine. Mm-hmm. There's just things I do every day. Well, yeah. Yeah, you don't think that that's something that's important? What, to have a routine? Mm-hmm. I don't like routines. I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't, I, like, I like structure, but I don't like routines. I, I like to know um, what I'm going to do tomorrow but i don't want to uh okay when i wake up every day i must do this uh at this time i must do this no i can do the same things every day but not the same way not like have a routine i guess just a morning routine no i don't want it (laughs) stop (laughs) stop trying to make me have a morning i don't want the morning routine (laughs) i don't want it you don't want it Mm -mm. Why is it important to have a morning routine? You don't think so? I don't. I've never okay. I've never thought about it mm-hmm. in that way. I just know I don't want it. Mm-hmm. Why don't you want it? I can get it. <laughs> I, I, for my. Hmm. I just don't want it. <laughs> for what reasons? I confirm as much as I confirm. You know, <laughs> I, I, I like a young surprise every now and then. Mm-hmm. Not, not a big one, just a young one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I don't, I can't be waking up and doing the same thing every morning. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> What is so wrong? What is it about that that it's not that it's wrong? You, no, for you. Personally, yeah, it's, I mean. it's it's just not for me. Yeah, I'm saying, what is it about that for you that makes that such a ugh, you know something that you're like, hell no. It's gonna bore me if I'm doing the same thing every morning. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. I'm gonna get bored, and then, and then what? Then I'm going to stop doing something I love because I've done it so many times that it bored me. I'll do it in a different way, There's, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I'm saying I like structure, not routine. Right. What's the difference? Okay, let me try to explain this thing. Hmm, how am I going to put this in a way that's not going to confuse everybody? Um, okay, let's say I'm what time am I routine, guys? I <laughs> gag. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm trying not to bad talk anybody. <laughs> Not bad, I just don't well, this is about you. I'm asking about your Yeah, well, I'm always with people. Well, not with people. Like, I love people. But I'm. Mm-hmm. There's always somebody, mm-hmm. you know, whether I'm at home, whether I'm at a friend's, you know. 
I like I like being alone. Mm-hmm. But I also like a little bit of company. Mm-hmm. You know, but You see, I I uh, I don't want to step on any toes. <laughs> No, <laughs> I I can't forget about it. It's part of me. It's part of my life. Well, just for a few minutes, forget about that. Because mm. I mean, even when I go to set, you know, there's it's it, the it's the same but different to what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, you're going to get there, and there's breakfast, and then it's the first scene, second scene. But now, the, the nice thing is that you, you're you always shooting different things. Mm-hmm. So, we have a structure. We, see, we have to do this and this and this and this today. But it's not the same thing every day, mm-hmm. you know. So, also in my life, it's like that. I'm, when I get, when I wake up, I know I must... I must eat, I must do this, I must do this. But I'm not going to do it the same way I did it yesterday. So but it's still going to... have some sort of routine, you just don't want to call it a routine, you want to call it a structure? No, no. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not. Okay, so tell me what the difference is between a routine and a structure. Umutu can wake up and the first thing I want to do is eat. Mm-hmm. Every day. I can wake up hungry today and eat right now in the morning or I eat at 12 mm-hmm. <laughs> or, I, or I don't have breakfast at all. But I'm going to end up eating at some point. <laughs> yeah. That's part of my structure. Uh-huh. But if it was a routine, go eight, I'm a, I'm a, I must eat at eight. Okay, you know, so I don't want to be tied down. Okay. I must do this at this time. I must do this at that time. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, like the own, the difference between the th- it's similar but not the same between mm-hmm. the structure and the routine. I hear you, I hear you, but I feel like you can have a sort of routine or structure <laughs> that suits you personally. It doesn't have to go the way everybody else's goes or be structured in the same way that other people structure their things. Some people have routines that change every week. Because they... Then it's a routine for them to change it every week. (laughs) 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 You know? But that's what I'm saying. You do what works for you. It doesn't have to be a certain thing that's like, okay, every day you have to do this at 8 o'clock and Uh at 9 o'clock you have to do this, 10 o'clock you have to do this. Some people do love that. Mm -hmm. But as you've said, you don't. So you can do it differently. It doesn't necessarily have to be a thing of, you know, that being that specific uh-huh. every single day and it being the same every single day. Yep. It's just sort of a thing that's like, okay, I know that these are the things that I do to take care of myself or these are the things that I do to set my day up so that I'm having a very smooth sailing day uh-huh. kind of thing. That's what I mean by having a morning routine. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to my words. I don't want it. Well, you don't have to have one. <laughs> if you don't want it. Mm-hmm. Or you can just say that you don't want one, but still have one and call it something else. Sure. <laughs> mm, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't at all. <laughs> uh, well, to yeah. each his own. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we can call it a wrap if you'd like. Do you want to share anything? <laughs> I'm all ears. <laughs> what are you all ears about? <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you? Where was I? Yeah. I was in Vietnam. Doing what? Teaching, coaching, mm-hmm. mentoring, those kind of things. Do you feel like you're done with that mission? Well, I'm done with the teaching English as a foreign language, mm-hmm. which I'm definitely still carrying on with the coaching and the doing early childhood development kind of things. Yeah. What does that mean? It's um, 
basically doing things that help children form or get them ready for school because if they miss those crucial things in like the early stages they're left behind so you're programming them (laughs) not programming them Mm. but just helping them out to be ready by the time that they get to school so that they're not left behind or left out and things like that left out of what? Hey? Left out of what? Of the, of the skills that they're supposed to have by the time that they are in school. Like fine motor skills, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. m- gross motor skills, things like that. Mm-hmm. And creativity, ways of thinking, critical thinking. Do you feel like schools are programming children? <laughs> Do I feel like schools are programming children? I feel like a lot of things are programming all of us, but, Mm -hmm. you know, again, that's why critical thinking is important. Yeah, and that's why these kind of things that I do with talking to people about their behaviors and their habits and things like that and figuring out where they came from Mm -hmm. and being aware of them to begin with, I I feel like that's important to deprogram people. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> like it's crazy what i feel like schools need to um relook at this whole system yeah, their the whole system sucks th- dude it's terrible. <laughs> it doesn't teach a person to be themselves and yeah. to play the role that they're supposed to quote unquote hmm. play in in life in society yeah and i feel like that's why society a lot of the time is very sick it is. Mm. Look at where we are today. It's crazy. But yeah, I, I, I let me not even get into that because that's gonna be like <laughs> another hour conversation. But yeah, thank you so much thank for this. You. Uh, I feel like there's things I need to go back and think about mm-hmm. and figure out, you know, so that I can love my. Okay, no, love myself. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to say you gonna love my people the right way, yeah. but no, love myself first, uh-huh. mm. and love my people too. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>